In this video, I am excited to talk about my favorite part of Microsoft Copilot, which is how you extend or enhance it to improve your organization. We've been lucky enough to work with customers who've been using the preview of Copilot and ourselves have been doing some of this extensibility work, whether it's in plugins or Microsoft Search, which we'll talk about. And there's some really amazing opportunity here that organizations can have. Once they start to use Copilot, they can start to connect it in new and clever ways so they can get more value out of existing enterprise systems, third-party systems, and of course, to simplify processes and streamline activity for users. So let's talk about the two main ways you're gonna extend and enhance Microsoft Copilot. The first way is you're going to connect uh, using the semantic indexing of Microsoft Copilot, you're gonna connect Microsoft Search to other data sources. If you've never done this, you one of the most common scenarios is you integrate and connect Microsoft Search with your website. The way you do that is you go through a really simple wizard that indexes your website, pulls it into what's called the Microsoft Graph, through Microsoft Search Connectors. And now that content shows up and is actually useful within Microsoft Topics and Viva, or it could be useful in other experiences like, of course, Microsoft Copilot. This means that when I search and do a semantic prompt saying, what's the latest on support ticket or something like that, and it pulls that data that's been indexed from ServiceNow or some other system, maybe some information from Workday, et cetera, then I can see that information show up right away within the Copilot experience. That is what we call semantic indexing or Microsoft Search Connectivity. The other big category, and it's really exciting, is plugins. Now plugins basically mean that when I do a prompt, I might be asking for something where the tool can actually do and execute commands on my behalf. This actually happens a lot. When I ask for something really simple, like based on the last meeting we just had about X, I want you to create a proposal document. It's actually not just doing one command, it's splitting that up and doing a series of different commands. It's going and finding the last transcript from the last meeting, it's interpreting that to then generate, um, if it, meeting notes already exist or don't, to generate meeting notes, and then it's reflecting on that to generate the first draft of the proposal. It's then potentially looking at something like, if I mentioned a customer, you know, here's an example of a plugin, it's now accessing CRM, grabbing the CRM data from Salesforce or Dynamics or some other resource set um, to get that information, pulls that information in. Now it's combining that into this new document that's now populating. It's populating it based on some templating, insight from the LLM model about what proposal documents should look like and how they're structured and so on and so forth. So in that scenario, one command is actually, brrr, it's a bunch of different things that are happening on your behalf. You know, one command can easily become potentially hundreds of interactive or actionable items and commands within say an office application or something like that where it's formatting and it's structuring and it's reflowing and it's doing all that for you. And the benefit of a plugin or the extensibility that plugins provide is that we can add activities and actions capabilities to this AI agent, this copilot, so that it can actually do some of those scenarios without necessarily needing your support. You're still in the pilot uh, seat, it's your co-pilot, but again, this can really save a lot of time. So a really simple example could be, I want to ask about, um, you know, I'm actually going on a trip tomorrow um, for speaking at a conference. One of my peers, another MVP is also going in my team. And so I might be like, hey, what's his schedule look like? It pulls up that schedule, makes sense of it. And I say, excellent. Can you book me the same hotels, the same uh, flights? Can you do all that? And now it's going to use third party plugins that we've enabled or that we've extended on that allow us to then use those different services to purchase uh, the flights and do things like that. Again, the whole time I'm approving, I'm validating, I'm trusting, I'm verifying. It's not like it's doing all this without my input. And then I make those decisions. And now, you know, we can run into each other and spend more time together when we're at this event, uh, because, you know, it's hard when you're remote work to spend time with other fellow employees. So plugins can really help by simplifying a lot of those scenarios. Now, this brings up a broader question. When we think of preparing and making sure that we're effective with enhancing plugins or you know, connecting uh, Microsoft Copilot to other systems through search and semantic indexing, are there other things we should think about? And there are a few things. One of the things to think about is evaluation. You need to make sure that you're evaluating each plugin before you enable it. Whether you're creating your own or whether you're using somebody else's, you need to understand how is it gonna handle security? How does it handle confidentiality and privacy of your data? How does it process that data? You know, what, is, what else does it use? There's a lot of questions. And unfortunately, while there's 900 plus plugins for ChatGPT and there'll be a massive number of plugins all launch, 
for Microsoft uh, 365 Copilot, it's really important that we address and assess each one before we enable it. Another big one is you're gonna get requests for people to enable plugins. And so you need to make sure you have an intake process just like you probably do for data connections in Power Platform or for apps within Teams, as an example. You need to have a process so IT can evaluate and do the a proper due diligence to enable those pathways for users. Another big one is continuous training. Uh, earlier, I mentioned in both the pilot and in scaling that it's really important to continue to adapt your training to make it about outputs, like how to make meetings better or how to make working with documents better than say co-pilot training. Um, this is also important because when you add plugins, you're actually adding more capabilities. And those capabilities might be really good for updating some of those existing training scenarios. If we know we use ServiceNow and that's where a lot of our KB articles and knowledge base is, we should make sure that anything that talks about uh, working with things like documents, knowledge, etc. Maybe those training artifacts need to have updates just to now represent how you could also use ServiceNow through Copilot um, to improve those experiences. Another big one is performance monitoring. So one of the other things that you need to consider is how do you handle um, as people use these other uh, plugins, is there gonna be any performance implications for the Copilot experience itself? Now the plugin framework is actually pretty amazing in how it's been architected and it solves for a lot of these things, but do understand that this can sometimes cause a delay and it's really important for you to test and verify just how much does it add to the process flow and to make sure that people understand, you know, when it starts to execute this, you need to wait, you know, if it hopefully it shows prompts and things like that saying it's working on it, uh, depending on how that plugin and third party worked, but it's really important to help people understand that, hey, this, this piece is not under us in Microsoft, we're working on uh, performance here. This is really a different subsystem or especially if you use third party systems or custom integration. We have some plugins as an example we've done for extensibility reasons that connect to legacy systems like old systems within an enterprise. And some of those systems for a variety of reasons are not very performant. And what we're doing is we're carefully monitoring the performance to figure out when should we move either sync the data from these systems to an intermediary that's more performant and then retrieve that from Copilot, or when should we potentially modernize these data systems themselves. So again, performance becomes a little bit more complicated when you start to think of the plugin architecture that you're using. Lastly, feedback loops are really important. Just like before, we wanna know how are people using prompts how are they learning and what's working and what's not, we also wanna make sure that that represents our understanding around these plugins. So making sure we understand what prompts are people sharing that have worked and haven't worked that use some of these plugins because that can be a great way to better assess um, how we ourselves might create policies or amend our AI policies, not just for core Microsoft Copilot experiences and capabilities, but also for how we use it within various plugins uh, and when not to use it for certain plugin scenarios as well. Anyways, I hope this has been really helpful for you. I know it can be daunting getting started with a lot of this stuff, um, but I think sometimes it's just really useful to take a step back and say, what are the pathways forward? And what are some of those key considerations that'll get us if we haven't pre-thought them uh, as you prepare your own pilots or you yourself are getting prepared for Microsoft Copilot. Thanks everyone for your time.